Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. I'm here to finally do the um, pretty kind of long-awaited review for myself of Hotel of the Laughing Tree. Hot LT, something like that. Hotel of the Laughing Tree. Of the, of the, hot LT, I remember, yeah, anyway. Their new album, which comes out this Friday, it's released on something called Bend Your Head. Uh, I think it's their own like imprint, their own label, self kind of like a self release. Um, it's called Far Away Friends. So I got two copies. I haven't opened the second one. They don't have. It's not being released on vinyl, but it's really being released digitally. It'll be on Spotify and a lot of other streaming networks. A couple of singles are already up on Spotify, and of course it's on compact disc. They release. They have a. Um, Merch store up too, which I just picked up this shirt. I hope it's the right size, because <laughs> I just bought that the Dirt Per Robin shirt a little over like less than two weeks ago, and got that as a two XL. Because the previous time I bought a Dirt Per Robin shirt, it was an XL and it was too small. But I think this is the right size. I don't know. I'll find out. Anyway, it's called Far Away Friends um, Hotel of the Laughing Tree. So you know, I've talked about them. Who are they? They're a band. They originated from, I think, Brooklyn, New York. Um, I don't think guys. I, they've got this podcast now and everything, telling some of the origins. Um, they put out an EP in 2009 called Old Dominion, and they won this MTV U Woody Award thing for it. They were, I don't know, they got coverage on MTV and everything for that. Um, and then it was two years later, in fact, they put out this debut album, which it was actually supposed to come out in 2010, but. They had some stuff with the record label, Brookvale, I think it was, um, to release it the next year, and they changed the track list, and they added the, one of the best songs on this album, probably my favorite song on this record, maybe my favorite song they've ever done, called Weather Match from Nikolai, but uh, it's called uh, Tear and Everything After, their debut album. It's an epic record, like, well over an hour. Um, I told the... Uh, I feel like it's more than enough people about it, and some people did like it, um... But this is um, a record I, I played the hell out of, um, similar to what I did with Set Sail the Prairie of Cas Fly in 2006 and 2007. 2007. Um, and then they, the, year, the years after this came out in 2011, I mean, they didn't really tour a lot for it. They did some local shows, unfortunately. I never got, I've still yet to see them live, Hotel of the Laughing Tree. I mean, the membership, the two main guys, AJ Estrada is the singer, and he plays a lot of, a lot of the guitars I know. And then Brandon Peterson's like the lead guitarist, and he has like vocal harmonies. Those are the two guys, the primary songwriters. But I know, um, like those are the two main guys that came up, came are were still in the band when they were doing the, the new record, Far Away Friends. Um, who's the other guy? The the drummer. I, can, I was looking at Jonathan Straker. Yeah, that's kind of Straker. Straker. I thought his name was like Chris or something, but. Um, I, I'm not sure if he's even on this. I think he's the one who's maybe heading the podcast. But anyway, they've had different members since this first album. Even I think Dole Dominion. But um, they put out two EPs that followed uh, Tearing Everything After called um, Mammoth Skin 1 and Mam Part 1 and Mammoth Skin Part 2. And it was like 2012 and 2013, I think it was. Um, and I like those EPs, but I, I wish I could say... Yeah, 2012 and 20, I think it was 2013, or maybe 2012 and 2014. Look at another band camp. I, I think, not, I don't know if all of them are on Spotify, but, yeah, it was 2014, so it was two years, almost two years later, but one of the songs that was on, I think the first Mammoth Skin, no, the second one, called Steamwalker, was like an extra track, if I'm not mistaken, for this was just really good, just like Weather Match from Nikolai. It was I don't know why it wasn't able to be included on this record, but anyway... And so then they put out their second full link, which didn't come out as a physical item. It was called New World Sundown, and I did a review on YouTube for it back in 2015 when it got released. And I, I like it. They recently remastered it last, like, November, December uh, for the band camp. Um, I don't know if I hear vast differences, but I haven't listened to that that much. It's a good record, although having revisited it and revisited uh, Tearing Everything After... You know, and even the new one, I don't know, I'm not, I, I like a lot of it, but I'm, I'm not as addicted to it. 
Um, and after that, I know Brandon, I don't know if it was after that, before that, moved from Brooklyn to Tennessee. And um, they ended up putting out a, a, like a collection of old, other songs called Hotel Junk Box. It was like 2017 or 2018. I think it was 2018. So, I mean, they, they didn't break up exactly. Where is it? Hotel Junk Box right there. And I honestly listened to this maybe twice. I probably should go back to it since I've been listening to the, the so much of their music. It's like 19 tracks. Some of, I don't know if some of it's live. It was 2017. Um, but I know the band, in effect, consider it canon as part of their full discography. But anyway, so, and, you know, stuff's happened. Life happens, and they come up with other things they have to do. And But they never fully broke up. Um, and then, so I guess, not that long ago, after New World Sundown or whenever, maybe around the start of COVID, they started working on a new record. Um, I had no idea. I mean, I, I, I kind of assumed that they were kind of done, but, you know, reunions happen, and, you know, I think COVID kind of got people thinking, let's make a record. We're just stuck inside. So they make this record that yeah, I, got a, I got a message from Brandon, or I think it was Brandon, late uh, last year about this. yeah we have a new record and it's going to be coming out pretty soon so pretty early in the year so just keep that in mind then they sent it to me <laughs> I, mean, I was like i was like out of nowhere it's like oh, totally i love the, the previous work especially tearing everything after i'll be up for listening to any new album from you guys and they sent it to me it was like late february so i've been i've been having it listening to it for quite a while almost two months now maybe over two months i forget the exact date um but then they went up for sale last week, and here it is, the physical. The new album is called Far Away Friends from Hotel the Laughing Tree. The artwork actually reminds me a little bit of Moron Police, but I know they kind of, don't they predate Moron Police? Anyway, it, they have, I mean, you can look at the artwork on some of their other re releases on Bandcamp, and then you can see a, a, just a, somewhat of a distinct style, but it's also different in some ways. This seems to be like a, a, a artistically about like a duck or something, but so I probably should just get it out of the way, and I've mentioned it, Ad nauseum almost. Here's the CD. I'll show the book in just a minute. Hotel the Laughing Tree. I didn't put the light on like I meant to. My apologies. So this this video might end up being dark. Maybe it'll be a little bit better now. Um, they appeal to and and it's still especially that first album and the first EP of Dominion. Their their music does sound a fair amount like the Deer Hunter, um, but other bands. One of the bands they are pretty influenced by i think it's the early period uh, is uh, margo the nuclear so-and-so's uh also like ockerville river and um but you know they i find that as much as it initially they did sound a lot like the deer hunter and that kind of style it's modern progressive art rock progressive art rock um i found that they kind of had a, enough of their own thing going after listening hearing distinction especially aj estrada's vocal style now, you listen to this album and probably every other release of theirs, the New World Sundown, he's a little bit gruffer and deeper and stuff. This new album, I think there's a clear sign he's, he's matured or he's grown, he's adapted his vocal style, and he's more subdued, or subdued isn't the right wor word. He uses some falsettos, he does get kind of animated in, uh, at times, but it... We I, we did on in uh, the images and words Discord channel. Uh, my friend Christian Frantic Dav did a hosted a, a stream of this album yesterday, and I haven't listened. I've listened to parts of this. I've I've listened to it frequently, like off and on over the last you know seven six seven eight years. 2011, 2012, I was listening to it a ton. But um, there's definitely a clear cut difference in his style of vocals, the vocal lines, in a good way. I mean. In some ways, it was a little bit of an adjustment. It was like, this is the AJ is really sounding a little different. But, um, you know, when I first got first started listening to it a couple months ago, I, I liked it. Or there were moments I really was liking, but it, it after about four, five, six times hearing it all, the songs really start to reveal themselves, and they're still growing on me to an extent. But every track on here, it's it's thirteen songs. It's like sixty. I want to say it's like an hour, maybe a little over, maybe an hour and nine minutes. It's so it's not a short record. Like they haven't put out an album that's short though. That's the thing, because um, New World Sundown was was I think over an hour, and uh, you know tearing everything after the debut album was, um, 
was was well it was like probably close to 70 minutes um it doesn't tell the length on here i thought i had it but anyway it's on rate your music um but yeah this album i mean it's every song has something to enjoy for the most part the, the only song i'm just kind of lukewarm I mean, lukewarm is the best way to put about the song that i probably will go back to the least i've gone back to the least is the second to last track keep them coming which isn't bad but um initially i thought the second half of this album let me just start showing the artwork it's about a duck was i preferred the second half and i was talking i'm talking to brandon on on instagram he's like you're probably gonna like the second half more than the first half um and i'm kind of I mean, I think it's kind of consistent. If I was having to choose which half I like more, I probably would choose the first half because I think those first four tracks, um, Songs Out of Season, far, the title track, Far Away Friends, Ducks in the, in the Flood, and Mirrors Up, and even April Afternoon, all have some kind of hook, a chorus, atmosphere. There's a lot of great atmosphere, energy, but it's not the same kind of energy. Like, on this is just like this ferocious animated like exclamatory um emotional almost animalistic kind of um you know pat impassioned energy i mean although this has its moments of you know dynamics and subtleties and stuff like that but i think it's more refined on this album some of it has a retro sound like um i think it's mirrors up or no ducks in the flood ducks in the flood has this um almost vintage 70s-ish kind of synths. Da, 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 da. Um, it's the second single they release. Knights of the True Forgiveness, that track has almost, it's like a Zeppelin thing. It's like a, a Middle Eastern like guitar part. Or I was thinking the Tea Party. I don't know if the band, any of the band members, if, if Brandon or if they've ever heard the Tea Party, but it, it really good, a really good arrangement, a really good texture. Um with the, like, it sounds like an acoustic guitar, but it's, it almost sounds like a Middle Eastern thing. It's almost like a jam band thing. The final track, At the Bottom of the Night, well, I just listened to it again. I initially heard it. I thought, this is their masterpiece in some ways. It's it's 11 minutes, although the last, like, minute and change, maybe two minutes are kind of, just kind of calming it down. But um, it has, like, a Munsters sort of, with um, rhythm that kind of, kind of builds a little bit and it ha it's like the monsters theme dun, 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 with like a xylophone or vibes or something like that um but it, it, it's you know it's whatever it's even the the, the, ch the large chunk of the different sections of that track and it, i think it is the longest song they've ever written uh the t tear and everything after the title track on here is pretty long but i don't think it's quite that long i could be wrong um because it's like almost 11 minutes at the bottom i always think of a at the bottom of the ninth it sort of fits. It's the, the last track. It's the bottom of the ninth. I, I got to believe there that had to be sort of a, a play on words, a, a, an entendre or whatever. But um, Starman Underwater is. I was I thought first time I thought it said underwear, but Starman Underwater is very. Um, I wouldn't call it trippy, but it's it is like kind of psychedelic, psychedelic in some ways. That the, kind of capturing what it might sound like underwater. Someone going underwater. Um, Double Double Sunday Daydream is dreamy. Um, there's one track, Three Voices, which is just like acapella, um, which is fine. It's it's nice. It fits. It's only like two minutes or whatever. So Greatest Hits is a slower ballad. It, it has its hooks. I mean, there's like four or five really strong choruses on this album. Some of them, tempo-wise, are slower. And I think that's kind of what uh, Hotel the Laughing Tree has done well. did really well on this, on... on um, New World Sundown, where well, they're good at writing like these choruses that are mid tempos. Occasionally they get more up tempo. Um, some really good bass work on here. It's just it's it's the production is really good. Although having listened to at the bottom of the night today, there's a section in the middle where it gets really crazy and jazzy. Um, the I heard some a little bit of like re heavy reverb. I don't know. I need to listen to it with headphones. And I haven't actually heard the CD. I'm talking about MP3s that I've I've been playing in my um on my my laptop and my computer. But yeah, Far Away Friends. Um, is it a breath of fresh air in some ways for me being a fan? You know, going back now would be 13 years or whatever. Not really anticipating this, although 
I kind of always wondered what happened to them, figuring they put out that junk box compilation and they never really broke up exactly, but they just were kind of, I know they posted on like Twitter or Facebook or something a little bit once or twice, but I mean, they haven't done like too many live shows. I know that, I think it's, is it Jonathan or whatever that he, he's from Boston or he lives in Boston. So he, I mean, he's like the newest member. I don't know if he was on New World Sundown, um, but yeah, looking at this, yeah, he pl he plays vocals, piano, electric guitar, uh, Wurlitzer organ. So he probably he probably had a lot to do with some of the vintagey sounds on this. Um, but who played the drums then? That's kind of interesting because percussion, because the drum work is really good. Like on Mirrors Up, the drums is are, is, is part of the biggest highlight of that of that track. Mirrors Up is a is a banger. I mean, that the, the title track, Songs on a Season, kind of, I, I get sad listening to that. I mean, conceptually, what is this album about? I kind of, I think it's so, something to do with being literally separated from family and friends because of distance, because of lockdown and COVID and just wondering how the time, kind you know, these guys are now in their, whatever, mid-30s. When they made this, they were in their 20s. And, you know, you know, it was only 10 years or whatever, but it, it, it feels like, but, you know, it feels like, like a, almost like a lifetime ago. Some of this is almost like a concept album of someone who had a dream and, so, you know, but, you know, the whole duck thing and, um, yeah, I mean, and so for this year, I mean, I haven't heard a better record this year. I'm not saying that that means this is better or worse, but this clearly is my favorite album of 2023 at this point. There's a lot of stuff coming up. Up to this point, there's been sort of, it's been sparse, a few things that have come out, but um, it's been my most addictive album too. Although I have not wanted to listen to it addictively because I didn't want to burn out on it. Kind of like the fact that uh, the Rain of Kindo stuff that I could listen to that may or may not end up being on their new record. I don't want to like burn out on stuff because then that, a few years ago with the Rain of Kindo that happened where I listened to the, the those MP3s they sent through the Patreon over and over again and then by the time the album came out the songs weren't new and it felt like well this is fine and just i've heard these songs so um but yeah i mean i guess they, they made this album as much for themselves and you know the real like loyal fans or whatever as they're not trying to get big or you know that mtv thing was sort of um i wouldn't call it a fluke but um i, I don't think you know that the deer hunter fan base i still think very easily could and should enjoy this. I wanted to show they did give me a couple of like buttons and or just ma a magnet here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're they're a niche band, um, but their music itself is not prog in the sense that it's like super technical, but it's complex and this album is more atmospheric. Um, it's not sim it's not simple music at the same time. Um, but it's catchy enough, it's energetic enough, the songs are of a reasonable length for the most part. Um, and, you know, I, I just think more people could, could and should. But if they don't, you know, they're making it for myself, for the people that know them already, that remember them. And for the, you know, that's what they're doing. They're not trying to, I, hopefully this won't be the last record. My impressions listening to the, the guys on the podcast is that, you know, they probably will make more music. Let's hope so. Because this is a really... Like I said, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. It's it's a, a very good record, um, you know, and I'm, I've been listening to a lot this year. We'll see in five years from now if I'll be listening to this as much. Probably in, among their catalog, you know. Both these albums especially are albums of this, so the 21st century that I'll probably always go back to and cite and among my favorites. So uh, please subscribe if you have to subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you listen to Hotel the Laughing Tree, I'll leave a link down if you have not. But again, if you're a fan of The Deer Hunter, if you're a fan of progressive art rock, modern progressive art rock, prog rock, mo you know, that kind of style, you know, the, the Dirt Per Robins, you know, the, all those bands that kind of fit that, you know, they're not technicians, but they're still, you know, very artsy, um, doing, you know, relatively ac accessible music, but very artistic. Um, yeah, check out Hotel of the Laughing Three Faraway Friends. Comes out April 28th on all the streaming platforms and, um, of course, on their Bandcamp page. And, um, you know, through their website, you can buy a physical copy and, of course, the merch and all that stuff. But, again, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time.